Hogwarts Castle, a 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 21. Refitting the wheels and connecting the valve gear. I'm going to start this episode with quite a lot of parts that I got from Blackgate's engineering. And I would like to thank a couple of people. First of all, Mr. Anonymous, who arranged quite a lot of gift vouchers with Blackgate's engineering for me. And a man called Richard from Leeds, who also sent me a generous donation via Blackgate's engineering. These gift vouchers are very useful because they allow me to buy plenty of parts from Blackgate's that are used in the videos, like this tin of etch primer, and all of the nuts and bolts that I use all of the time. The gift vouchers allow me to stock up more frequently than I would do ordinarily. You may be wondering why I want some 7.25 inch gauge handrail stanchions. Well, I'll be making something using them very shortly. I forgot to include in this video all of the copper shim washers that I bought too. That's enough frivolity and excitement for now, it's back to work. These are the freshly painted valve gear links that hold the expansion links. The main expansion links are not painted and in this clip I'm removing some paint that accidentally got on them. It's time now to fit the middle wheel set and it's a bit like wrestling with an octopus. Apart from fitting the wheels the correct way round, I need to make sure that all of the eccentric rods are in the correct position. Fitting the axle boxes was surprisingly difficult but eventually I got them in the right position and they just fell into place. The engineering on this locomotive is quite good and the fits on the axle boxes is excellent. This is not always the case. I've worked on locomotives where there's so much side play in the axle boxes I've had to put shims in there before refitting them. It's worth remembering when doing a job like this that you must not fit the valve gear before you fit the front wheel. But then again, if you fit the front wheel, it's in the way when you fit in the valve gear. So it's a bit of a catch-22 situation. I'm temporarily fitting the top pins, but I will be fitting the bottom pins, complete with their split pins, for real. And before I forget, it's time for some oil, because very shortly I will be rotating these parts. But before I do that, I need to make sure that they're well oiled. Time now to bolt the keeper plates to the horn blocks. These keeper plates are held in place by two 4BA bolts at each side, which is more than enough because don't forget the locomotive is upside down, and in any case there isn't much stress on these bolts, they're only to keep the keeper plates in position. The locomotive would run perfectly well without them until you picked up the engine and then the wheel sets would fall out, so that's what they're there for, to just hold the wheels in position. This is one of the shorter bottom pins, and you can see the cross hole that takes the split pin. These were very fiddly to fit. I discarded the original split pins and fitted new ones. And now with two of the eccentric rods moved out of the way, it's time to bolt in the keeper plates that hold the front wheel set in position. And after fitting the keeper plates on the front wheels in position, I'll be able to turn the engine the right way up at last. But not before I fit the lower eccentric rods with the extra long pins to the hangers. In this clip I'm applying some red paint to the split pins, just to stop them rusting. Now that the engine is the right way up, I can finish the painting of the valve gear where I couldn't get to it when it was upside down. If you look at this system carefully, you can see how it works. The shaft I'm painting at the moment can be rotated from a lever from the cab of the engine. And as this shaft is rotated, it lifts the expansion links up and down. Time now to change the colour. I don't like to use too much red paint, so I'm using some black paint just for a change. This is HMG Satin Black, and I've sprayed some of it from the aerosol into the plastic cap, and I'm using a paintbrush to apply the paint, as it would be highly inconvenient to mask off all the bright parts, just to spray these smaller bits. The part that I'm painting at the moment is the motion bracket, but I'm also going to paint the valve operating linkage, because this is really underneath the running board and very difficult to get to, and it will only go rusty if I don't do this and as far as I can see, most of it was painted black in the first place. Originally, the crosshead and slipper were also painted black. The slipper is the gunmetal bit. In this clip, you can see what remains of the original black paint on the crosshead slipper. This satin black paint looks really horrible until it goes back to its normal satin black appearance. If I was doing this in gloss paint, you can see that it wouldn't look very good, but this paint's really good for locomotives, it looks the business. But don't forget, not all satin black paints are equal. This is an enamel paint from HMG Paints, and it dries almost matte, but not quite. Some satin black paints remain quite shiny. Here's the story so far. 
And if you think that not much has happened over the last few months, well, I agree, I have been a bit busy. But as a comparison of how much progress has been made, here is a short extract from a previous episode. And as you can clearly see from this extract, quite a lot has really changed since I first took it apart. Even I don't remember it being as filthy as this, but alas, it is a steam locomotive, it runs on coal, and they are very dirty, smelly things. And it's only when you work on them this close, you realise how dirty and filthy they really are. One viewer once made a comment that really made me smile. The comment was, you've got very dirty hands. Well, no surprises there then. Recently, I found some really brilliant hand cleaner. It's the best stuff I've ever used, and I'll be doing a video feature about it soon. Here's a clip from the before video, and here is one from the current one. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.